Fresa, Castro Valley, California, in the Bay Area, East Bay. I mean, everyone cares about the way their car looks. Like, most people care about the way their car looks. It can't just be all, all go and no show, right? So I have to, I had to keep the exterior up a little bit with the power it's putting down. Saibon carbon hood with the vents there to help let out some of the air, but it's horrible when you wash the car. Saibon hood scoop, bigger hood scoop to intake more to the top mount too. I say top mount uh, for the faster spooling. Custom lighting by Kaizen Lighting uh, with HID projectors. I have to be able to see at night and especially helps with the canyon roads so you can see deer. And stuff like that. Custom by Elim Aesthetic down in Fremont as well. They do custom LED tail lights. Rally tech front license plate holder to angle it down a little bit. Exterior wise, that's about it. I kept the car actually, even though it looks really aggressive, a lot of the stuff's pretty stock. I plan on doing a little bit more exterior mods, uh, maybe a little bit more aero stuff, depending how the car performs on track more at higher speed tracks. Uh, I'll see how the downforce feels. Uh, I don't think this wing provides too much downforce. I want to stay away from going with the GT wing if I can. Uh, I, I don't know if I like the way a GT wing looks. But if it needs it, it needs it to, on high speed turns. And maybe some more front arrow on the way soon too after I get out my next track day and see how it performs. Wheel setup on this, I had to choose my old time favorite wheel. Uh, the Desmond Rega Masters, which are hard to find. Uh, these are 17 by 9 with the 18 offset and they fill in the 55 millimeter wide flare just right. Uh, it's pretty much perfect. Two degrees of camber, front and rear, and they fill in just right. They go up and down with minimal rubbing, only on gigantic bumps does it rub. I had to go flare to fit the 255s under the body. I, if I could, I would say stock body, but a 235, 225 that fits under a stock body of a GC just was not enough, not enough meat. I, I did actually, initially when I did the swap, I had 225s on there. But it just spin it too easy. It, it would go and shift to the second gear, it'd actually break traction. So I couldn't do that. So we had to put the flares just to fit the tires. They're not just for looks, they're actually the other way around. The flares are for performance, not looks on this car. My local tuner in the East Bay is I use Mike at GST. Highly recommend them. The car put down on a Mustang dyno about 380 horsepower and 380 torque cob intake we did top feed conversions 1300s because i was gonna go e85 we did the flex cob flex fuel kit blouse 1.5 dominator turbo radium fuel filter radium dual pump intake setup that's the that's the cool one you need fuel to pump these bad boys up every bolt-on you could do without building an engine i did i can't think of tgv deletes the whole engine swap itself was maybe took about a month <laughs> or two. It, it wasn't that long. Uh, my recommended process, I recommend any oh, GC owner wanting to swap an STI engine is to start with two cars and just make it one. It's just a lot simpler that way rather than sourcing parts here and there. Because if you have two cars and you're swapping straight over, you'll have everything there that you need. You're going to have the ECU, you're going to have the engine, the wiring harness, everything you need. Suspension wise, the, uh, I mean this is what the car was originally built for, was to be a good canyon carver uh, and track car, obviously. Um, so suspension wise, I had to do a lot to keep up with the power. So we did fields, coilovers, all white line stuff underneath, which is white line sway bars, front and rear, white line anti-dive kit. Brake wise, we had, it has a 2005 stock Brembo's. I would love to do a 22B wide body one day because that's just a classic look for it. But going 22B wide body, as most of you guys know, requires tons of body work that I just didn't have time for. Um, you have to mold them in and if you have access to the track, they're just gonna crack. And if one of these cracks, I could just unbolt it and bolt a new one back on. So for me, it was convenience. Version five STI front seats, which I love the way they feel. They're suede, they have good bolsters on it and they look good in the car too with the little red, with the little red on them. Uh, steering wheel is from a 2005 STI because it had to go with the column because the STI has a key that has the immobilizer in it. So you have to swap the whole column to make it work in this car. So I got a 2005 STI steering wheel out of it. Um, and I also swapped the 2005 
dash as well, or the cluster, so I get the sweeping gauge and everything now. Uh, and it does fit in there, you just have to chop a little bit and you stuff it in there and you put it all back together and it does fit nicely. So that's the interior, I kept it real simple. AC still works, heater still works, radio still works. I mean, it's, it's a comfy modern car inside now. So when you drive it, you can drive around in comfort. Um, not too much race stuff. I did just install a Sparco harness bar for shifter wise. It's got shortened it up a little bit. I have a Cobb short shifter, Cobb bushings, Cobb knob. I, I just kept everything Cobb. It's a lot simpler that way when you just stay with one company. So when I swapped everything from the 2005 STI, you get the BCCD controller. So I have the BCCD in there. Axles are still stock. I don't know how much horsepower those can handle, but they're holding up so far as well. Six speed. Oh yeah, all six speeds. <laughs>